Hi guys, it's Dr. Liz here. How are you doing? How are you doing? <laughs> are you feeling maybe a little bit weary already and we are not yet through the holidays? I am feeling the holidays. Actually, I'm just feeling everything that's going on in my busy world and I know I'm a little bit early for our live, but hey, I want to drop in here talk to you a little bit about how we can start taking better care of ourselves because typically historically um, we tend to put ourselves lower on the list at least that's my the general consensus that when I'm chatting with all my fun folks myself uh, when I stare at myself in the mirror in the morning we just keep kind of reprioritizing ourselves um, because there's a lot of to do's still left on our list and that's why I just want to drop in today spend a little time talking with all of you about um, self-care what about what are the reason what's the why to do more work for ourselves and um, I'm gonna be dropping inside relationships Re renewed a nice little uh, gift for you free gift for you all about self-care what that may look for you some all sorts of cool stuff um, so watch for that inside our units as well, okay? So, you're taking the time out. You've got a busy schedule. Some of you may be in the lineup to pick up kids. Some of you may be uh, at home trying to get the kids to finish their homework online, submit it to the teacher so they can get credit, or uh, run them back and forth between work meetings and coordinating and all the other cool stuff. and our needs don't necessarily figure it out. In fact, <laughs> in between my breaks and sessions, I just went out there and found that um, one of uh, our big, big dogs, she's still a pup. Um, actually, it's our daughter's pup that we, we doggy dig sit some days. She had gotten into the big trash can. So we had all sorts of joyous stuff all over the floor and the couch including um, some empty very empty cat food cans so even when we have the best laid plan things happen things change so i want to talk to you about let's take care of ourselves especially this this time of the year but always and we often brush this aside like i do maybe you do for things like meetings um, social commitments. Maybe, you know, one of our, our traditions is making sure we home bake things or that we've written certain uh, Christmas cards or Hanukkah cards out and there's family obligations, you know, or maybe we have family that lives in multiple uh, locations and we have to try to hit every single home or group or gathering, even if it's right this time social gathering, but we're feeling the need to uh, make sure that everyone else's needs are taken care of, right? That's the, one of the big things. Everyone else's needs are taken care of. Family obligations. And while these are important, and in some, you know, in some cases, in some situations, they do make us feel better. They do give us self-care. Maybe it feels so wonderful to connect up with family as best we can, or see the joy in that other person's um, eyes or smile when we make our favorite, I don't know, green bean casserole or our favorite dessert that they absolutely, absolutely love. That's good. But we also, and that's a but, that's not an and or an oh, maybe it's, but we also need to take time for ourselves when we need it. And sometimes that means we need to pre-plan and think ahead. And this personal investment is gonna be for a lot of Good. It's not working for nothing. Um, in fact, when we practice self-care, and we're going to talk about that, and I'm going to have you kind of brainstorm some ideas of what self-care looks like to you. But when we do that for ourselves, we actually optimize our our performance, so to say. We optimize how we show up in so many areas of our lives and taking the time to maintain our physical, emotional, and mental well-being leads to success in many other areas. In fact, 
not too long ago, research showed, uh, research was like, or corporate research was saying, hey, multitasking is great. You can be efficient. Boom, 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 boom. You can be doing emails and answering calls and preppy meals and watching podcasts and all kind of things. And what more recent current brain research has found is when we multitask, we actually slow down we increase errors, we increase burnout, we ultimately, ultimately increase our perception of feeling like we're ahead of the game. Okay, multitasking actually makes us feel like we're falling behind. Why? Because we have so many open buckets, so to speak, we don't really get to cross off the list, feel ha, ah, and go to the next one. We may be in the midst of an email, boom, 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 talking to somebody on the phone, old-fashioned old phone, okay? Here we go, like, talking to someone on the phone, and um, we finish the email, but because we're already distracted with the conversation, we don't get the satisfaction of checking off the box that that email is done, because odds are, another email comes up, or, another task gets put on our plate or another phone call comes in or a text message because this is my personal one so a text message from the family so i'm moving from multiple 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 tasks not getting the satisfaction of checking it off the box plus it slows us down when we move from one brain task to the other it has us literally shutting down one side of the freeway in our brain and going to another side. And we lose, maybe it's nanoseconds, but it is important to know that we do lose time, vital brain time, vital task time, and more, emotion, and more importantly, emotional satisfaction time shifting around in the freeway circuits of our life. So, multitasking is not good for us. It's not good for our performance. It's not good for our perspective in life, which takes me to the first one. Self-care helps us maintain perspective, right? Regardless of what health self-care looks like for you, and that's what I want you to be thinking about, it allows us time to reflect and get a better understanding of ourselves as who we are, where we are, what we're happy with, maybe what we're not happy with. And that's where a lot of people don't like to go, right? And so that's where some people say, I can't meditate. And I'm not, no, no, no um, down and on meditation is really great. But sometimes the meditation or the quiet time or the self-reflection really does bring up stuff in areas that we, we want to look at. We, we, it would be good if we looked at. So self-care helps us maintain perspectives. We're better able to identify triggers, put things into perspective, identify our priori priorities what's important and what isn't. And overall, this process of gaining perspective contributes to a much healthier life because we're gonna understand where stress is important or needed and when we just kick back and relax. Oh gosh, I think I first year into our marriage, I decided that I was opting out of pretty much all of uh, Christmas card sending out. I had spent Many, many years as a youngster, an adult, and then you know, quasi-adult, helping my mother put out hundreds of Christmas cards to people that we didn't talk to all year, but they needed to get a Christmas card. And in fact, it was such a, uh, a task. There was a card table with chairs set up against it, and there were stacks, and there were address books, and stamps, and all stuff. And whenever you had time, or when you're mandated, we'd get over there and start filling them out to send to people that I didn't even know sometimes, all right? So I opted out after the first year because my Christmas cards were going out on the 24th or sometimes after. And I thought, well, well, well. I sat back and evaluated and said, this is where I don't need to stress. But where I do want to stress is I wanted to make home-baked goods for our really sweet neighbors in our neighborhood and some of our family members. So I re 
prioritize, I got my perspective, what was important to me. My husband, he stepped in and, and decided he was going to take over the credit, uh, over the uh, Christmas cards, and he quickly understood where I was at. And I and I think that we, you know, doing it down to just a, a small handful. And then pretty much now, we call people, we text people, we use social media, um, or we see people. Oh, forget. What about that, huh? <laughs> Self care number two helps us stay positive. It's really, really great for our mental and emotional well-being. Guys, we, we need to invest in ourselves, invest time in taking care of our, ourselves. And researchers found that people that do invest in taking time and caring for themselves are more likely to be optimistic and be seeing the silver lining in bad situations. Right? Well, I wonder what that happens. Why does taking care of myself allow me to be more positive, to try to see the good things in life? Well, I think my personal thing is that we're getting an emotional break. Sometimes a physical break of self-care means, oh, I'm gonna take a nap, all right? Um, it lets us step out of the busyness and feel like uh, we are rewarding ourselves or having a chance just to catch up with ourselves really a lot of the time is catching up with ourselves. And so self-care is a very quick, free, effective way for maintaining a positive mood, a positive perspective, rather than dropping deeper and deeper into those darker emotions that cause depression, apathy, you know, who cares kind of kind of thing. And all of us get that. I do, you know, all of us do. But this is a quick, maybe not quick, but it's a very effective way to help us move more to the positive side of life, right? Self-care improves our relationships. Number three, when we invest time in ourselves, one, that's a huge self-care, self-worth, self-esteem thing. It means we count, we matter, we're not just some number, we're not just some drone, we're important. That makes us, it puts us in a better place to interact with and support others. When my needs are met, when I'm taking care of my health, my emotional well-being, my satisfaction, my joy, whatever, when I, my, I feel balanced, zen, I'm in a better place to be with my family, be with my friends. So like I have enough energy, my, bandwidth, whatever, I can help that other person. I can really listen to the other person. I'm building stronger relationships with my husband, with my kids, with family members, with you guys, all right? So it improves the quality of our relationships. It improves us being able to be there and really connect. Which, being there, really connecting on, some, on the backside is a great rewarding cycle. We feel like our energy, remember we talked about um, when's an important time to uh, invest in stress, when that stress is just right. This is one of them. But I'm, I'm feeling good. I feel like I can sit and listen or I can help them out. I can go across the street and help my neighbor put something in their car, you know, mask on, whatever it be. Um, so it may, it helps me, helps us, maintain strong, rewarding relationships. Okay. Number four, it improves our work performance. Yep, it does. Many of us were raised, or we developed, so we don't want to throw everybody that we used to know or that raised us under the bus, okay? But many of us have come up with, whether through families, a culture, through our self-imposed values. Many of us feel like self-care is seen as indulgent. We feel like, I just don't have time to do that. Or, oh my gosh, you know, go getting, I don't know, spending that on me, taking the afternoon off, taking a hot bath, whatever it might be, spending the afternoon reading. We sometimes misinterpret it as indulgent. And that often has a bigger, broader impact than just on us. Okay. One, we sort of frown on other people. 
Oh. You stayed in your pajamas today? You were sick? No. Hmm. Judgment. Okay. Um, <laughs> in fact, well, it shows up in the corporate world, too. Okay. Uh, historically, naps were not seen as you know, necessary. Even lunch breaks or regular restroom breaks weren't seen as important. Then corporate world or business world kind of caught on and, and um, <laughs> things like mandatory breaks during the day and lunch were considered um, minimal and needed. Then for some of you that might have been in my era, all of a sudden this really cool concept of adding uh, naps into the work world happened. And there was nap rooms, big companies redid whole floor plans and created nap rooms where you could reserve and you go take a, a 15, 30 minute nap on the company clock or nap in your chair. Yeah. And it was considered paid time. All right. Then that slowly eroded and we're not necessarily back to the nap time things. But um, we do know and research does know and back you know, during the, the nap room stuff is that accident rates went down in companies. Um, job satisfaction went up, people felt better, they felt happier, they felt more invested and connected. And so while there aren't necessarily nap rooms you know, everywhere, we do know, I know, that people did who invest in self-care, whatever that looks like, and that's where you get to decide, are more likely to be healthier, both physically and mentally. Um, and they have better uh, enthusiasm for work, whether it's work at home, work at the computer, work with the kids, work in the yard, work with the groups. We have patience, we have energy, we approach tasks, whatever that may be, with focus, um, feeling stronger, more emotionally stable, probably not going to break into tears um, or rage when something has an oops, because why? Because we've come in more stable and more rested and better, better prepared. And so self-care improves your relationship with yourself, with your partner, with your sweetheart, with your spouse, with your kids, critters, co-workers, neighbors. Okay. Self-care is a good thing. And it's worth the time, and it's worth the energy, and it's worth the investment. Um, I can't tell you how many times people tell me, we were ready for a divorce. Oh, yeah, man, I had already like start, started the text to say, kiss my, you know what, I'm out of here. Um, I don't think we're right for each other. All you do is work, or you come home exhausted, or you're tired, or you're grumpy, or you're... And when they got off the hamster wheel and they took some self-care and they went on a vacation or a staycation or had a good long uh, nap, they came back better and more engaged and had more enthusiasm to work things out or stick things out. Maybe some of you are feeling like that. You're starting to shake your head and say, oh, I don't know. I'm just too worn out don't have anything left in me. Okay? So it does take time to invest in self-care. It does take some energy and some bandwidth. But the benefits so far outweigh the price. And that's why I'm talking about it. Because right now during the holiday season, especially, but all, all year round, I need you to invest in yourself. I need you to give yourself some self-care because that is not only going to boost you and improve your emotional well-being, your physical well-being, your mindset, and things like that. It's going to give you the bandwidth and the energy to invest in your relationship. I want you to have the relationship you desire, you deserve. I don't want you to kind of just sloth through, you know, I call it knuckle dragon, through the holiday season or into 2021, 2021, isn't that amazing? Um, or 2023 or 2025, just getting by. I need you to invest in yourself 
and that means invest invest in yourself things time and some money and some energy yeah mm -hmm. but the benefits here guys the benefits are going to far outweigh the price right you get a strong foundation going for yourself that strong foundation is going to allow you to build yourself and build your relationship i'm here to give you the tools i'm here to give you the time the q a that you need i'm here to help you i want you to have good health good relationship i want you to enjoy life i want you to reap the rewards. I want you to reap the benefits of being in an awesome relationship. I need you to do that, right? You need to, I need you to. So much happens to us that we sort of self-impose because we think we're doing the right thing by holding back, by not spending the money, by not um, you know, taking a nap, not doing her hair, whatever it might be. You know, walking in the store. How many of you, raise your hand, how many of you walked in the store with the intention to buy yourself a new whatever? New pair of shoes, pair of pants, cute shirt, um, that special treat that you wanted, you know? Oh, by the way, Costco has some delicious um, chocolate almond, chocolate coconut almond things. Good stuff. Okay. So how many of us <laughs> have gone into those places and we have left without that purchase. But in the meantime, we have ended up with something for someone else. Oh, they could use that, oh, they could use it. And I'm not denying that, that there are so many competing needs, but I'm telling you that we need to spend time focusing on our self-care. So I'm gonna be dropping in a little, probably a little bit later today maybe tomorrow some, some free little gifts for you guys it's going to be in the units about self-care i'm gonna put this video in there as well i want it to be a reminder i want you to have some kind of mantra what do i need you do need to come first right you do need to take care of yourself because that is going to put you in a better position i want you hey i see tori there how are you i do want you to um Make yourself and your relationship a priority, right? I will also drop some links in because I have a happy marriage, happy relationship masterclass. I have some other cool things in my member vault that I want you to start looking at because it starts with you. Self-care starts with you. Starting making the changes starts with you. You don't have to wait for them. They will follow. It will happen. I've got a really cool freebie too in there. It's um, exploring uh, love languages and what it looks like in your relationship and in your, how it pops up. I want you to you know, have some of these things that you might need. Maybe you don't even know. So anyway, I'm gonna pop off here, say hi. Um, you know, I'm gonna think uh, like Tori sharing, budgeting self-care. <laughs> um, yeah, how many times have you decided, I'm gonna go work out, I'm gonna go for a walk, I'm gonna sleep in, I'm gonna read this book, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. It's, I think that should be a syndrome, I'm going to. Because sometimes we just like, oh, okay, well your need comes ahead, I'll, I'll, I'll just do it. And pretty soon, over time, we stop having the I'm going to. We stop dreaming, we stop self-caring. Let's change that around this year, guys. Let's change it around. Do me a favor. Supercharge yourself, which will intend, in, in the end, supercharge all the other areas of your life. Spend some time reflecting. Get curious about what you need. Remember what was working in the past. See what you've dropped away now. That's going to be one of the clues. When were you feeling great? What was, what was making you feel great? Are those things still now part of your life? <laughs> if not, Maybe there's an opportunity to add them in, in some shape or form. Um, if they're there, what's happening? How come they're not working? What do we need to do? Okay. So, homework. Define self-care for you. What can you do? What would it look like? Start journaling, start writing it down. Drop it in the DMs. Share it in the group. My God, you guys, we need to know 
We need to have creative bursts. When we're run down, we don't really <laughs> feel creative. Hmm? All right, that's your homework assignment. I expect everyone to have naps. I expect everyone to have fun, have joy, have peace, have whatever it is that defines self-care, bubble bath. Or not bubble baths, I like those Epsom salt kind of things with the lavender. Mm, okay. All right, so you know some of my self-care. Um, so let's get creative, let's share. We're all in this together. Uh, we need to take better care of ourselves. We can impact and make super, super, super great changes in our relationship. I want you to have that successful, long-term loving relationship. I know you can. All right, bye-bye. See you inside some more.